Shumai. Welcome back to Books I Have Gone Done and Read, a silly little series where I talk about the books I've read since reigniting my passion for reading this year. Today, we're looking at Percy Jackson and the Battle of the Labyrinth. Ah, Battle of the Labyrinth, aka the back room before they were cool. Now, I could go on forever about how good this book is. It's writing, writing, and storytelling style truly realised at its best. The, char uh, the characterization is better than it's ever been. The stakes more tense than they've ever been. And the set pieces as unique and interesting as ever. As a child, it wasn't just my favourite Percy Jackson book. It instantly became my favourite book of all time. And it remained that way for many years. In fact... It remained that way until this year. Alas, Asimov stole my heart with his weird alien shapes earlier this year, so it doesn't have that spot. But because of that deep connection I've shared with Battle of the Labyrinth for all my life, I think it's most appropriate to delve into this book's relationship with me in an attempt to convey what it means to me as opposed to attempt to traditionally review it. Since I started rereading Percy Jackson this year, I've been, I've kind of been wondering why exactly this book in particular has stuck with me for so long. Since the moment I've read it, I've championed it as my favourite book of all time. Now, I'm the most indecisive person ever. Do you know how hard it is for me to label something as my favourite ever, and to never have any wavering thought on it? Especially when, technically speaking, the book is not that different from the rest of the series. Yeah, it's the most well-written and consistently great entry in Percy Jackson's Olympians, sure. But I can equally say, see why people would say that about any of the books in this series. Last Olympian, Titan's Curse, Lightning Thief. So it says the best of all time. And the reason instantly clicked during a certain moment in this reread. Something I didn't even notice as a kid. This book was my first ever exposure to a completely normalist description of asexuality, a spectrum that I personally label myself on. Hey, wait up. I called her. She glanced back at me. Yeah? Something Hephaestus said back there. About Athena. She swore never to marry, and they've said. Like Artemis and Hestia, she's one of the maiden goddesses. I blinked. I'd never heard of that about Athena before. But then, how come she has demigod children? I nodded. I was probably blushing, but hopefully it was so hot Henry that Anne Beth wouldn't notice. Percy, you know how Athena was born? She sprang from head of Zeus in full battle armor or something. Exactly. She wasn't born in the normal way. She's literally born from thoughts. Your children are born the same way. When Athena falls in love with a mortal man, it's purely intellectual. The way she loved Odysseus in the old stories. It's a meeting of minds. She would tell you that's the purest kind of love. So your dad and Athena. So you weren't. I was a brainchild, and I've said. Literally. Children of Athena sprung from the divine thoughts of her mother and the mortal ingenuity of her father. He was supposed to be a gift. A blessing from Fina and the men she favours. <sighs> I would have read this years before I even knew what asexuality was. Never mind for figuring out I myself was ace. And it's certainly not the entire reason, but I think a large part of why I love this book so much is my subconscious kind of latching onto that fact. See, Athena doesn't define herself by romance or desire, but by connection and relationships. Percy doesn't understand the concept, but accepts he doesn't need to. For the most part, the concept isn't depicted as strange or bad, and Athena isn't depicted as chased by duty or innocence like Artemis. She explores relationships with men just in a way that isn't traditional to most allosexual people. This book isn't just an intensely exciting read. 
isn't just filled with amazing set pieces and character moments, but it's also had something that really latched onto me and helped me realise something about myself, even if it didn't fully come to fruition for years. And I think that's worth bringing up, not just for this book in particular, but Ryden's work in general. Because I know it isn't just me. Percy Jackson was invented as a bedtime story so Rick Ryden's own son, who had dyslexia and ADHD, could finally have a hero he saw, saw himself in. And I know many people latch on to this series because they also identify with that. Then, after the Percy Jackson series, Ryden really started making a big effort into representing more information on characters from other identities and cultures, with Nico, Hazel, Leo, Piper, the Kane siblings. The list really does go on, and it's one of the uh, reasons people love his work so much. Now, undeniably, I think it's one of the main reasons I love his work so much. So please, I encourage you with all my heart to check out any of his books out, regardless of what I may rate them.